Hi, I'm Drew, and I'm an amateur model builder. I'm building a layout in my basement called the White River Line inspired by the Frisco Railroad in the Ozarks. In this episode, I think I'm finally going to get around to laying some track on my layout. And I may, just may, be able to run a short train on the layout as well. Now, despite all the prep work that I did in the last video, I still have a little bit more prep work to do before I can lay that track down. So, let's jump on into it. I continued my prep by laying down some more cork roadbed. This time I laid it down on the curbs and for the siding. I cut strips of cork 5 eighths of an inch wide. Cutting narrower strips for the curves will make it easier to lay down. I switched from using a utility knife to using a rotary cutter based on a suggestion I got from a commenter on YouTube. This is actually much easier. Just like last time, I laid down a bead of silicone and spread it with a putty knife. This time I was able to use the center line of the track as a guide when I placed it to the roadbed. I again weighed it down with some cans. I followed this procedure for the curve at the top and bottom of the left side of the layout. I created a cardboard template for cutting out the correct angle for the roadbed, for the diverging route, for the siding. I only extended this roadbed for about 12 inches for this siding leading into the yard. The siding and the yard itself will be laid down on 8th inch roadbed. Generally speaking, sidings and yards are lower from the main line, so I'm going to model this profile on my railroad. I built a number six turnout for the siding that will lead into the yard, and I needed to finish that up too. First, I'm going to paint the ties. I started by painting the PC board ties with some Israeli sand gray primer. I then used some German black brown, watering it down significantly to stain the ties. I actually like this a lot better than the ink and alcohol stain I used for my ties in my last video. Once this was dry, I added an over center spring so I can, for now, manually control the switch. I'll replace this with some switch machines later. You can find some instructions for making these springs on the Fast Tracks YouTube channel. I'll provide a link below. I snipped the rails to length, and I used a rail joiner to size them approximately.
Now I need to prep my ties. I designed a jig to help me get the spacing right on the ties, and my brother-in-law printed it for me on his new 3D printer. It's a straightforward process. I place the ties in the jig, Then I put a strip of masking tape on them and pull them out of the jig. I used a little bit narrower strip of tape on some of the sets of ties to make it easier to place them on the curves. I'm almost ready to lay down these ties on the layout, but first I took a second to sand the cork rug bed, paying special attention to the joints. I also sanded down the bit of road bed for the siding. I need to get it down to one eighth of an inch for that change in the grade I mentioned before. After vacuuming up the majority of the dust, I used a little isopropyl alcohol to do a little final cleaning. I placed the turnout on the roadbed and marked the last tie. Then I painted some white glue on the cork and placed a strip of ties down on the glue, starting approximately one tie distance from where I'd marked the end of the turnout. I just judged it by eye. Before moving on to the next strip of ties, I weighed them down. After the glue had dried, I pulled up the masking tape. I decided to sand the top of the tie. As I ran my hand along them, they didn't feel quite as even as I'd like. This will ruin the stain I put on them, but I wasn't really happy with it anyway. After cleaning up the dust from the sanding, I restained the ties with German Black Brown, just like I did with the turnout. I began work on laying down the turnout. First, I marked the location for the switch point. Although I'm not installing a switch machine right now, I do want to drill the hole for it now, so I don't have to remove the turnout to do it later. I place rail joiners on the base of each rail. This will be easier to do now than later. I actually slid a joiner on, pulled it off, turned it around, and slid it back on. This will expand the joiner a bit and make it easier to slip on the next bit of rail. I used some T-pins to set the placement of the turnout as accurately as possible. Then I sighted it along the line and adjusted it to make sure it lined up with the tangent track. With this final adjustment, I was ready to spike it in place. My first attempt wasn't too successful. The pre-drilled holes in the laser cut ties aren't quite large enough for these spikes. I drilled them out a bit with my pin vise and had more success.
After spiking each end of the turnout, I then spike the pre-drilled holes and the ties in the middle of the turnout. With the turnout in place, I was ready to add some tangent track. For reference, I'm using this book called Track Work and Line Side Details, published by Kalmbach. It contains an article on hand-laying track. I prepped the rail by wiping it down a few times with a paper towel to remove the oil used in the manufacturing process, along with any dust or other schmutz. I squared up the ends with a file and eased the edge on the base of the rail so it would slip into the rail joiners easily. I slipped the rail into the joiner on the far rail of the straight route of the turnout and spiked it in place. Then, at the other end of the rail, I used a bit of scrap rail and my track gauge to center the rail over the ties by eye. I spiked down this end. Next, I used my yardstick to keep the rail straight and spiked it every six inches or so. Then, I spiked the first six inch section every fourth rail. But after siding this section, it wasn't quite straight. So I pulled it up and used a ruler to keep the rail nice and straight while I spiked the side of the rail away from me. Then I removed the ruler and spiked the near side of the rail. I moved along and completed all the spiking of this rail. Once I did this for every six inch section, I moved on to the second rail. I slipped it onto the rail joiner on the turnout. Then, on the other end of the rail, I used my track gauge and spiked this end. Then, moving back to the start of the rail at the turnout, I spiked every fourth rail, making sure to keep it engaged. You may notice I placed one of my 123 blocks on the rail. I did this mostly to keep the rail steady as I worked. I did not rely on it to keep my rails engaged. I tried to use some T-pins to keep the rail engaged as I worked, but I found this didn't really work. There was too much playing. The technique I landed on was to spike the side of the rail nearest to me, snugging it up to the gauge, then spiking the other side of the rail. I also found that the design of these spikes allowed me to rotate them slightly and to adjust the placement of the rail, keeping more accurately engaged. And with that, after only three or four hours of work, my first three feet of track is laid. I moved on to the next section of rail. This section has a portion that will be tangent track and a portion that will be curved. I started by slipping the rail into the rail joiner and spiking it into the first tie. 
Next, I used a few T-pins to hold the rail in approximately the right place along the curve. I spiked the tangent portion completely before moving on to the curved portion. Unlike with the first section of rail, I did not spike the end of the rail in place before spiking through the middle section. I didn't really feel confident that I'd be able to accurately place it along the curve. Thus, I used the T-pins, which would give me a little bit more wiggle room as I moved down. As I moved on to this curved portion of rail, I spiked every eighth rail, attempting to keep a smooth, consistent curve. I used my track gauge and a spare bit of rail to try and make sure the track would be centered on the ties. After working to the end, I came back and filled in the rest so I had a spike every fourth tie. Moving on to the near rail for this section of track, I used the same technique as before. I worked from one end to the other, spiking the rail every fourth tie using my track gauge as a guide. The track book I've been using as a resource recommends against joining track on a curve. It makes it difficult to keep the ends of the rail square to one another, but it's a bit unavoidable in this case as my curves are a bit longer than my 36 inch sections of rail. So why am I hand laying my track? Using flex track would be much faster. Is it to more closely match the standards of my prototype railroad? Well, no. I'm not concerned about that. I'm using code 83 for rail for the whole thing. And I didn't bother to research period standards for the tie placement or anything else for the Frisco Railroad. But will I save a bunch of money hand laying track? Also no. I might save a few bucks, but nothing substantial. Really, I'm doing it because I like the look of hand laid track, and I wanted the challenge of learning how to do it. Well, let's see if we can get a train to run. I don't have any alligator clips to hook up the power, so I soldered some wire onto some small bits of rail and slipped them onto the rail joiners. I dug out my old Tyco power pack from when I was a kid and hooked up the wires. Then, I grabbed my Baldwin 280 consolidation and a couple of cars I've built. And now, a year into my project, I've got a train running. Thanks for joining me on this episode. It feels like a real milestone, but I've still got a lot of work ahead of me. For my next episode, I'm headed back over to the workbench and getting started on a coaling tower kit from Walther's. So I hope you join me for that. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook, and those links are below along with a list of the tools and supplies I use. Please leave me a like below it's the easiest way you can help promote my channel. And please join me again next time as I continue modeling the White River Line.